No matter what you go for in life, it's going to be tough. You're going to come up against brick walls, but you've got to find a way past it. Go over it, go under it, go around it, go through it. But find a way to the other side. If you have a dream, and you're willing to work for that dream, you can have anything in the world. Nothing is impossible. to be talking to you. Thank you so much for the time, Mr. Flatley. I really appreciate You've dazzled fans and crowds all over the world for two decades, and now you're hanging up the tap shoes. How come? Well, I think it's just, just the time. I feel great. I feel satisfied. I feel like I've accomplished what I set out to do. And uh, my dream now, and the reason I'm performing, is to bring all this wonderful young talent through the door. Some sensational superstar dancers coming up today that are dancing with me and want to give them their turn to, to see the great heights and do the great things. And I want to spend more time with my young eight-year-old son and my wife and uh, do some new things. 20 years of dancing, to what extent has that physically taken its toll? Yeah, you know, I've, I'm not going to lie, I've taken a beating. I've taken a beating, uh, very bad. My, uh, my T1, my, my whole spinal column, my T1, my T5, my C3, my L5, my sacroiliacs, my knees, torn right calf muscle, a broken bone on my foot, fractured ribs, it goes on and on. But other than that, I feel great. <laughs> Last night with the opening of Dangerous Games, the opening sequence really rocked me a bit, saying that you weren't really given a chance, and here you are 20 years later, one of the top performing dance shows around the world. I mean, that must stir up some emotion, especially when you look and listen to that video. You know, it, it, it makes me proud. You know, I came from nowhere, and I always had a dream to try and do something great. And uh, my poor father, just he's just passed away, but he used to always say, if you believe in yourself, go after it, you can have it. Well, who would have dreamed 20 years ago that I could have sold out in Madison Square Garden in New York and, and, and be in South Africa today? It's a, like it's a dream. It's a, it's a greatest job in the world. I've been so blessed to meet so many wonderful people. And, uh, you know, uh, I think it's given me a lot of great things against the odds. I can only thank God for that. Let's talk about Dangerous Games, Michael. Uh, that's a concept that brewed in your head for quite some time before you let it loose on stage. I think Nikita Cassidy also mentioned something about seven months of preparation for Dangerous Games as well. Mm. Yeah, we worked really hard on this. Uh, but I had in my mind that I wanted to reshoot the entire thing. You know, I, my mind works in that kind of way. I was going inside for inspiration and I wanted to create something completely different and new and I wanted to make it more uh, more specific, give it more highs and more lows, more texture, you know, more strength and, and, and courage. So you see the bad guys are better and the good guys are better and, uh, you know, each one is sort of uh, more explosive in its own way. But I think it has a great effect emotionally on the audience and I think it works for audiences around the world. It's a nice story, it's a good versus evil sort of story and it's a, it's a story of triumph and the, the, the heart, if you follow your heart, that you can have anything you want. And I think you see the, 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 the guy, the hero in the show has some tough times, good times, bad times, but he wins in the end because he believes and the love of the girl and all the right things. 
Let's talk choreography of the show. So when you hear the word or the name Lord of the Dance, there's a certain level of perfection that you can expect even before a show like this starts. Being the choreographer and making sure that everyone's in step, no one's out of step, everything's in tune, everything works to perfection, is that a heavy burden? Well, I, I don't see it that way. I'm one of those people that uh, believes if you love what you do, then work is not work. Uh, I, my dream is to try and make each one of those young dancers a better dancer because they've met me. And I think the ones that gravitate to my shows are the ones that want to reach for the stars, that want to be pushed hard and work hard to achieve the best they can possibly be. It's not an easy uh, uh, thing to do. We have, you know, 40 or 50 dancers on stage, all of them dancing as fast as they can, hitting the stage several times a second at exactly the same time. That doesn't happen without hours and hours and weeks and months of work. And uh, we've achieved something great here. And I think the average person who sits and watches that show can see for themselves the amount of work that went into it. It's immediately apparent to any person that that didn't happen easy. And I think that's why people appreciate us. How has fatherhood changed your view not only on life but also on your productions? Well, I think it changed me quite a bit, uh, more than I'd expected. You know, uh, I suppose I'm, I'm not the first man who said that. Uh, you know, it's, it's something I had to learn to be a good father, but then subconsciously it changes the way you approach everything. You know, I suppose if I, if I didn't have a son, I wouldn't have jumped up the clock sequence at the beginning. You know, I, I wouldn't have gone deeper inside myself to try harder to create something even better. I would have just let it go the way it was. But this has, you know, sort of encouraged me to go further and do more. Uh, and I'm more sensitive, I think. You know, my little son is very intelligent. He takes after his mommy, thank God. And, uh, and he uh, sometimes whispers little things in my ear, and I like to try and coax him into the business. You know, I, I don't want to push him to dance or anything, but I sure would love it if he was involved somehow. I think the irony for me is, uh, is when you were 11 years old, you were rather reluctant to start dancing. And when you go back a bit, uh, it was your grandmother who taught you your first steps in, in the dance world. And do you still keep an open seat for her at your shows? I do. Yes, I do. And um, it's always brought me good luck for doing that. It's always been the proper thing to respect that because uh, you have to understand that back when that happened, when I started, men just didn't dance, you know, and even I got teased as a young lad. That's why we went into boxing, because my brother and I used to get teased. Uh, so it was a, it's a long, hard road to change that perception. But as you can see now, since that time, if you get to see the show tonight, the girls go crazy when the men come on stage, and they cut throw off their shirt, and they're cut, and they're ripped, and they're, you know, it's become sexy. And that's a good thing. We've come a long way, so. What happens after Dangerous Games for you? You know, I don't know just yet. I'm, I'm a painter now. I've been painting and uh, my art is doing very, very well globally, thank God. So I'll, I'll spend more time there. I'll spend more time with my wife and son. But I know I, I won't be able to be away long from creating more things. And I'll always be the creative director of the show and I'll always be involved with the show because I'm fanatical about keeping the standards up. I'm fanatical about having it perfect. Uh, since the beginning, uh, my whole goal has been to deliver the greatest show we can every night. People pay great money to come and see this show. And I, my job, and it's my honor, to deliver the best show every night. I met two wonderful people in the mall today. They were, came up from Cape Town, two young girls, and they paid their way up and they're staying the night to see my show. I'm going to dance my heart out tonight. <laughs> Come this far to finish second.